committee members have reviewed, I would entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Minutes are approved. Item number one is approval of right-of-way permit for the University of Alabama for the fiber optic infrastructure to Taylor Harden in the intercollegiate golf facility. Mike, welcome. Good afternoon. So this is a request from UA to run fiber uh, to the new intercollegiate facility that they're uh, building just south of uh, Jack Warner. I know the map's kind of small, but but it it begins there, kind of at the southeast corner of the Ed Love plant. Will run northerly along Helen, Helen Keller, and then basically go cross country. Uh, we don't have any issues with this request. Question. So moved. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. That's. Item number two is approval of right of way use permit for Peninsula North River to construct decorative gate improvements for the subdivision development. It would help the committee chairman if we'd stay on that because I don't have my glasses. <laughs> but I did, I don't think I mispronounced anything, did I? I did get that. So anyway, Mike, welcome. Back. All right, uh, another right of way use permit. Uh, Peninsula subdivision is about 11 lots at the end of the old watermelon road where it used to run into Lake Tuscaloosa. Uh, this is a, a decorative gate that is basically at the terminus of our existing right of way. From there beyond, this is a private street. Um, diagram here, we've analyzed this, this gate system. Uh, does not interfere with any of our services that we need to provide, emergency access, ESD, whatever. So we're, we're in favor of this. And there's uh, a little bit larger diagram showing where the location of the gate is. And then you can see there the lots that uh, are in the development. Does the assumption on the side loading garbage versus other type impact? No, sir. There's no, you have no concerns. You no, sir. We're, we're, we're in favor. Yes. Questions from committee members? Entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Item number three is approval of minor public works contract with ABC Cutting Contractors not to exceed 2622. Welcome, Selvin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a request for a minor public works contract with ABC Cutting Contractors. This will do some saw cutting of the large concrete slab that is left at uh, our ESD facility. This will be the first phase of the work necessary to refurbish that parking lot for both our employees that work there and the equipment that we park on that lot. So, and this is budgeted out of our operations. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Any other questions? Question? <laughs> uh, no question. Entertain a motion approved. So moved. Second. Second. Moved and second. And all in favor say aye. 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 Item number three is approved. Item number four <laughs> is approval of professional services agreement with Ward Scott Architecture for architectural and engineering services for the Calton Park Improvements Project. The total is $93,070. Summer, welcome. Thank you. So this is for Ward Scott and Morris. I needed to uh, fix that on the memo. Uh, but it's $93,070 for design services for improvements at Calton Park. Um, just a, a refresh of that area. So yeah. this is in my district, and it's one of the uh, one of the projects that I have going on that I'm most excited about. So, I just want to say. Y'all have any questions? Really excited about this. Where is the money coming from? <laughs> right now, it's ARP. Fine. They're, 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 for this contract, for this particular contract. And is, so, that, is there a group of projects being executed out of that ARP, or is this yes, part of, Is the ARP staying in the bucket, and as we bring one project up, we pay for How's that working? This is budgeted, I think it, we, we recommended in our 22 ARP. The Carlton Park piece? Yes, sir. And uh, I will likely be recommending some additional funding from other sources in my capital budget on, on April 18th. I have no other question. So moved. Second. 
Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion, item number four carries. Item number five. What are you doing with it, right? Oh man, it's gonna be fabulous. Like, if we have a groundbreaking, y'all gotta come play, okay? Well, it's gonna be fabulous. I remember when it was in the whole place twice. It's, a, it's still pretty awful. It's, it's a very old park. I'm not sure how old, maybe 20. Oh, it's so. way over the way more, Yeah, and it looks like it. Let's say 50 years. <laughs> I've, I've never took my kids to play there because it's that it's that awful. I'm sorry. Yeah. So I'm going I'm to I'm talk about it another day. I'll give you a little, a little uh, plan yeah. of what we're trying to do. Um, new restrooms, pavilion, uh, refresh the, the baseball field that's there, new site furnishings, brand new playground set, uh, drainage, lighting, security. Lighting. Yes. Awesome. The lighting will be wonderful. And what was that last piece? Security. 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 And, re and restroom locks. <laughs> yes. Electronic <laughs> restroom locks. So parent doesn't have to come. <laughs> yes. like, so we can keep them open. You can keep them open. Uh, lock in the shower. 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 They lock the shower too. Oh, really? yeah. Right now, during the winter, all the. I'm going to show you the pictures, the pictures of our current residents of Shelbyville. Uh, are there other folks who are out there uh, putting in new um, mulch all back in the corner? Appreciate that. Are the doors locking yet? Yes, they are. At 6 p.m. At 6 p.m. and they open at 6 a.m. As long as some old grouchy councilman goes and kicks the door stop out, he holds the door open. So no door, no door stops on my doors. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, I am. The work y'all doing out there is obvious, and I, I hope it goes well at all. Thank, Thank you. you. It's going to be great. Thank you. Thanks. Item number five is approval of minor public works contract with Asplon, never know how to pronounce that, tree yeah. expert for removal. Four trees at 807 and 811 Cherokee Avenue. Craig, welcome. Yes, sir. Um, thanks for having me here today. We're going to take down two trees behind each address. Um, this is over in District 1. Uh, I know we've had some calls about these yes, uh, four trees, um, so we're going to get those down. It's, uh, I know it doesn't have it up there. It's going to be $7,000. It is coming out of our outside budget, uh, outside services budget, and that is also for the four trees to come down and the fence to be replaced behind both residents when we get done because the trees are in the fences. Thank you so much. Questions? So moved. Moved. So a question, not specific to this one, so when we see this, and I had one recently in my district, that means those trees are in our right-of-way? Yes, sir. Two of them are in our right-of-way, and two of them are right on the line. On which side of the line? On their side of the line, but it is issued. Why would we be cut? Because it's right on our MLK project, and we had told mm -hmm. the customer we were going to take them down. So it was. it's on our side of the fence, but it's on their side of the property line. Okay. Second. Thank you, sir. Moved and second, and all in favor say aye. 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 Item number five is approved. Item number six, authorization for the mayor to execute a hangar lease agreement with NHS LLC. Jeff, welcome. Good afternoon. We're excited to say we've reached final negotiations with uh, NHS management on a, a new hangar to be constructed at the airport <laughs> for one and a half acres of airport property. They uh, are paying market rent, have gone through the LDP and building permit process, and have got a term. Uh, based off the amount of investment that is associated with the construction of this hangar. So we're going to be bringing a new facility. They've been a long-term tenant at the airport. They've uh, increased the size of their aircraft due to the expanding of their business operations and is a good, another good story of the use of the airport. So questions? market rates, are those homogenous across our hangars? Or do they vary by proximity to the tower and the runway? It, it, there is a little bit of variance based on location. It's like maybe a cent or two. Uh, it's 22 and a half cents per square foot. It was a rent study we did back in 2016 that looked at similar airports to Tuscaloosa with the same type facilities. So we've been trying to graduate those rates all the way up to market. But the, is our goal to have it a homogenous rate? Absolutely. Or that even we make some allowance for some, uh, some hangers being more advantageous than others? Depends on what how they're using it. If they're making an investment, it's like a land lease only would be a cheaper rate than if they're able to access land that's already has improvements on there. So there's some variations there too. And in the term of the lease, Jeff, I assume that's a negotiated thing where we sit down and look at the amount of their investment and then try to come up with a mutually agreeable timeline that allows them to recover. 
Absolutely. Like that and that's one of the challenges. If someone uh, devotes a certain amount of investment, we want to give them the same amount of term as somebody else that does the same amount of investment. So we had a, a schedule uh, made for us back in 2019 where it says for this amount of acreage, this amount of investment, you get this much term so we can be uh, consistent across the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions? No, sir. Motion. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Item number six is approved. Thanks. Item number seven, the annual agreement between the city and the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force regarding T-33A jet aircraft static display that is located at the Tuscaloosa National Airport. Welcome. Good afternoon. Uh, Mr. Bob. Good afternoon. And everything I just said what I wrote is what I would say here. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're doing. It's just an annual renewal. This a plane on the stick? <laughs> plane behind you on the door. It's so moved. Moved and second. And all in favor say aye. 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 Tom, item number seven is approved. Item number eight, the res a, a resolution authorizing execution of trade agreements and related documents. Welcome to Kate. Thank you. Good afternoon. In arts and entertainment, we have various trade agreements throughout the year. So this is a resolution authorizing the director of arts and entertainment to execute trade agreements <coughs> and related documents, which will be approved by the city attorney, provided that the contract amounts are within budget and compliant with Alabama bid law. Questions? So as long as the contract amounts are within budget, uh, and is that by event? We do um, trades for various events. I'll give you an example of one of the trades I'm talking about. So down at the amphitheater, we have a, a show that it has a general admission. So we've got a pit for a thousand people. Well, most of those people start showing up about 630 in the morning, even though we don't open doors until five or six that night. So we provide porta potties for them out in front of the amphitheater. And so um, I'll do a trade with Spankies for tickets so that we don't have to pay for the porta potty. So mm -hmm. anytime we can save the city money by doing a little trading, that's approved by the city attorney's office. That's what I like to do. Any other questions? Motion. Second. Motion is second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Kay. Thank you. Item number eight is approved. Number nine, item number nine is approval of professional services agreement with Tyler Technologies. Jason, are you coming? Yeah, or, and Carly, we'll get both of um, I think that I'll, I'll go over the um, what, what the uh, technology technology package will actually entail, and then Jason can answer any um, any implementation questions. So Tyler Technologies is the company that um, uh, creates and um, and supports our ERP system, which we call Munis. So every single thing that we do financially um, and uh, a, a number of things that we do like you know, asset wise and uh, human resources wise, well, Munis basically houses all of that activity. And so Tyler Technologies is the one that, that maintains that system. This approval of pro uh, professional services agreement will be um, to create Tyler Content Manager, which is an extra module that could flow into this Tyler system. Um, Content Manager will allow a, uh, a, a picture export of every single transaction that we have throughout the system to maintain and marry with that transaction as it moves throughout the system. So for example, when we have a, um, a credit card charge, we have a receipt that will be uploaded and whenever that receipt is uploaded, it will um, attach itself to every single iter iteration of that transaction throughout all the systems. Um, and so uh, the total amount for this contract is $119,000. We have a total budget amount that is in our GFRFFI that was done through the 2023 budget process. Basically, this just allows a picture to follow a transaction. Thank you. I understand. That. The, the hundred is nineteen thousand. Is in his? You said in the GF. It's in the RFFI budget because it will be a multi-year um, agreement with Tyler. It won't just be able to be in an operating in an operating budget because it will span a couple of different fiscal years. We moved it into a capital fund so that it could stay there and not be closed out. This is where you pull your financial statements, where you do everything. Yes, sir. Right. It's all financial information. Um, it's it, uh, on a per transaction basis, on a per vendor basis. All POs are kept here. All human resource information is kept in here. All employees, that kind of thing, are all kept in our Tyler Munis system. Flows to payroll and everything else. Yes, sir. Exactly. 
Is this a one year agreement or is it? Multi- no, sir, it's a multi year agreement. Multi year agreement, okay. And it's a module on the existing Tyler contract. So added. Yes, sir. Correct. Other questions? Committee members? Would entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Moved and second. And all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Our final item and most important item is item number 10. Yes, sir. <laughs> Authorization to award for construction the Build Western Riverwalk project to John Plot Company. The total is $8,795,737.45. Mr. Mayor, will you yes, present? Sir. I am honored to be leading our team today on this particular recommendation regarding the Western Riverwalk. Um, as we began planning for this presentation uh, late last week, um, our team members considered this a celebration. Uh, there's been a lot of work that's gone into getting us to this point. It's certainly a project that we are all very proud of. And for me personally, uh, I took office on October 3rd, 2005. And some of the very first words that I ever said to the public as, as their mayor, as your mayor, is that we will carry the belief that Western Tuscaloosa and too many other parts of our cities have not seen the economic gains of the past decade and can again thrive both residentially and commercially. But we also decided that to do this, we need to make investments. And that's why nearly $3 out of every five that we invested from 2006 to 2019 went into West Tuscaloosa, whether it was keeping Stillman College's doors open, the NOAA's Ark Storm Drainage Initiative, whether it was Royal Pines, Oakdale, Taylor Circle, Jemison Avenue. Uh, when you look at Maud Watley Health Services, when you look at roads and water and sewer projects, Greensboro Avenue, Stillman Boulevard, MLK, um, our commitment to West Tuscaloosa cannot be denied because the facts support it. The investment of this council and previous councils support it. That's one of the reasons that makes today special. But we're not done with the investments within West Tuscaloosa. And when you look at the $65 million MLK Jack Warner Parkway project, that is the, just think about it, that is the largest city infrastructure project in our history. That is a commitment to West Tuscaloosa. But it's more than just that. $10 million for Benjamin Barnes, $1 million for Phase 1 at McDonald Hughes, with $5 million coming in Phase 2 in 2025. Carlton Park, which Ms. Howard has championed, and we'll be talking about a little bit later in April, and even Newtown Park. Uh, this city, this council, has made a commitment to West Tuscaloosa, and we're going to continue that commitment moving forward. But it goes, it's bigger than just infrastructure investments and new buildings. When you look at the dollars of universal free k summer learning, dual enrollment scholarship, athletic excellence funds, and skilled trades of West Alabama, that is a deep and abiding commitment that every student, regardless of where their zip code lands them, has an opportunity for success. And so as we think about the project that we're going to be outlining here in a couple of minutes, let's look back. First, I wanted to highlight our history of commitment and then now the history of how we arrived at this moment. In 2019, as part of our Elevate Tuscaloosa recommendations, we wanted $5 million, and the council authorized that, to go through the Western River Wall project. In 2020, and in fact, in early May of 2020, the city council passed a resolution <coughs> that allowed us to apply for the bill grant. Now, before I talk about the particulars of the bill grant, I want to describe the moment we were in. If you remember, that's about seven weeks after the city had declared a state of emergency for COVID-19. Um, at this time, we were an incident command at the amphitheater, and not, we were not thinking a lot about infrastructure projects. We were not thinking a lot about other things except how are we going to keep our hospital from being overloaded? How are we going to make certain the most vulnerable in our community health care and access to health care? How are we going to make certain people who are going to keep their small businesses open? That's what was going on in our mind. But this opportunity came up. And I am really proud of our team here at the city of Tuscaloosa. We had every reason in the world to walk away from this grant. In fact, we applied for this grant in 2019, and we didn't get it. And now in the midst of COVID, we had every reason to walk away, but we didn't. 
We didn't because this team, and you have an amazing team here at the city, has a deep and abiding commitment to West Tuscaloosa. So our application in May 2020 was a $20 million application in federal funding, authorizing the $5 million that we had already allocated for the Western Riverwalk. The grant included features such as applying for the Western Riverwalk Shared Use Bicycle and Pedestrian <coughs> Path, the Jack Warner Parkway Pedestrian Bridge, the Black Warrior Barge Mooring Improvements, and Hugh Thomas Bridge Pier Protection. Now, as most of you know, when you apply for grants, you go for the moon and the stars. And our team certainly did that, again, under the most difficult situation. And here's the good news. Three months later, we were awarded 15 million of the 20 million that we applied for. And of that, 5.65 million had to be pledged in city matching funds. We got with that 15 million in federal. We were authorized for the Western River Walk, the Jack Warner Parkway pedestrian bridge, and the Black Warrior Barge Mooring Improvements. Now, when we applied for this grant, thank goodness we had the support of our community. We had the support of our legislative delegation, we had the support of the governor, our congressional delegation, the business community. People understood what you already understood as a city council, is that if we were gonna meet that core belief of making certain that West Tuscaloosa has the opportunity to thrive both residentially and commercially, this was a great opportunity because this project married with MLK Jack Warner Parkway opens up over 100 acres of potential property for development in West Tuscaloosa. That in and of itself is a historic moment. So now I'd like to share with you some quick facts about the project uh, before we jump into the video. Um, but actually, let's do this. Let's show the video and then we will jump in to some quick facts. Stop right here. This gives you a good look at, I, I call this Manderson Landing, but better. It gives you just an idea. I mean, look at those trees. Look at that. That is, that is going to be an unbelievable setting in West Tuscaloosa. I think it's going to be iconic. 15, 20 years from now, people will be coming to this spot on the Black Warrior River with their families to take pictures, to show them where they are. It will have that same feel and look, but I think even better than what you have on Manderson Landing. You're not going to find that anywhere else on Tuscaloosa's riverfront, except for right here in West Tuscaloosa. Now, I want to stop right here because this is the entrance on the west side of the park, of the river walk. This is the entrance as you're coming into the Corps of Engineers property. Now, the Corps of Engineers property, the city does not own that property. The city is leasing that piece of property as part of the overall river wall project. So when you come in in the western access trailhead point of the western river wall, this is what you will be entering into. You see the brick pavers here back on the lock wall staircase in the back. site in the back and we look forward to the future development there because certainly this asset is going to do nothing but add value and opportunity to the hundred plus acres so if you look at the quick <coughs> facts of this you can go back <coughs> there we go 
some quick facts. We opened this project for bids <coughs> on February 21st. Construction cost of the, was 8.79. That was the lowest bidder with the project. We have until March 21st to accept this bid um, under the bid standards of this project. The overall estimated cost, once everything is put into the project, is $11.6 million. You have two trailhead entrances to the Western Riverwalk. Uh, River District Park, which is already open today, that was an $8 million project. And then you have the Trailhead West, which you just saw pictures of at the Oliver Lock and Dam site. The total length of the project is 1.4 miles, so uh, Mr. Crow and I can get out and we can jog up and back and we'll get two miles in and we can do two loops and we'll have four miles. I want to see that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be fun. Actually, Busby and uh, Pete and I will make that run uh, at, at some point. I'll go with you. Busby and Pete are slow and fast. <laughs> so just some points about safety and access. There are 94 LED lights as part of this project, 58 security cameras, three blue phones, two trailheads, and again, the other, what I think is important part of this, there's 100 acres of developable property that's adjacent to this site. And this is a game changer. This is the largest amount into this, this investment is the largest amount into the city's Riverwalk network. And you think about the future pedestrian bicycle connection it creates with our existing river wall, the Saban Discovery Center, downtown Tuscaloosa, and the University of Alabama, and it enhances the abandoned Tuscaloosa Country Club property. And when the developers and the owners of that property develop that abandoned piece of property, it's going to create future opportunities to connect with the community, like Clinton Drive, for example, would be a great connection we could have. Stillman College. It's going to create a lot more opportunities in the future for us to be able to connect across their property. You never, you all hear me say all the time, my favorite quote from JFK, victory knows a thousand fathers. Uh, this is a thousand fathers and mothers project, no doubt. Uh, this project is also complex. Uh, the site alone for the Western Riverwalk involved the United States Army Corps of Engineers, Federal Highway Administration, ALDOT, Kansas City Southern Railroad, and WATCO. And certainly it's not an easy process, but we appreciate the fact that they've worked with us every step of the way, even through a pandemic, even through now the IIJA, which has brought about new opportunities that's had everyone having to adjust to the moment. And so we are very appreciative of their efforts and we're also thankful to you as a city council for being supportive of this project. Our partners at the Tuscaloosa County Road Improvement Commission who will help us finish the last connection into the project itself, the Tuscaloosa County Legislative Delegation, our congressional delegation, and let me just get a shout out to Senator Shelby. Uh, when he reached out to us in May of 2020, um, he felt like he had a good opportunity to help us, and I'm glad he did. And again, I'm proud of our team for taking on that challenge in difficult times. Uh, we certainly have been blessed about this project with TTL who has provided us great engineering work, great professional advice. And lastly, our city team members. There are too many to, to add around this wall back here. I, you, know, um, you know, sometimes you read what people say about your team members and what they say about me is fine, I'm an elected official. Make no mistake about it, you want these people with you. They give a damn what happens in the city of Tuscaloosa. They care about what happens in the city of Tuscaloosa and they live it. In this project, they have lived with their hearts and their souls and they are excited today. <clears throat> we are at this point of bringing it to the city council. I am going to stop right here myself our team members are here to answer any of your questions that you might have. We're excited about this project and we look forward to discussing it more with the projects committee. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just a, a couple of things I'd just like to ask um, my, my teammates on the council is I would like to spend um, as much time as y'all want to today asking questions, making sure that everybody's concerns are met um, or answered in the best way possible because I would like to, to schedule a vote on this next week if that is 
agreeable with committee members, but that's kind of where my thoughts are. But I want to kind of hear what you guys have to say, what questions that we have, and also those that aren't on this committee, your opinions are very important because um, as we head to a vote on this, so I will open that discussion now. What questions, Stephen, you have for the mayor and city team team members? Um, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chair. Right. Um, I think this is an awesome project. Um, grateful and thankful that uh, we are now getting it on the road. Um, I remember meeting with Tyler and uh, talking to him about our concerns with um, timelines and what that needs to look like. Uh, this this video makes me want to go running, even though I might <laughs> start jogging. Um, one of those, one one though, one of the concerns um, that some people have asked me, uh, specifically to the Western River Walk, uh, were concerns of the the bathrooms in retrospect to the total mm -hmm. amount spent. Uh, I was at a school, and, and so can someone speak to me about the the bathroom situation? Yes, sir. We Of course, we have two trailheads, and uh -huh. we, the River District Park is already open and ready and available. Yes. And it's been our history to begin with trailheads. You saw this even with the Northern River Walk, the right. trailhead, then you build your river walk outwards. Um, in this case, we're fortunate enough to have two access points, River District Park and then the Oliver Lock and Down. Mm -hmm. The Oliver Lock and Down property, as I mentioned earlier, is the only piece of property that's not owned by the city in this river walk. Right. And right. so with it comes um, unique conditions that the city has to honor. And what I'd like to do, with your permission, Mr. Crow, is ask Jason Walker of TTL. He's taken the lead on this, and awesome. he has uh, a few slides he can show you that can outline what the challenges are with that site and um, and also what we have to adhere to um, under federal law. So, Thank you. Jason, Absolutely. would you mind? Thank you. Absolutely, Jason. Good Thank afternoon. You. Good afternoon, Jason. I'll be pretty brief, and uh, the mayor got to talk to me a lot about the, the good visioning and the, the fruits out in the end. This yeah. is the boring stuff, but it's the things that we start with as we enter into the design process. Mm -hmm. And in this case, like you alluded to, there, there's some real uh, unique things that tied our hands as to what we could do. So there's only four slides, but it's great. All right, so the first thing, and this is pretty unique, is sight lines. I'll, I'll give kind of a brief overview. You'll stop me if oh, you've wow. got any questions, because uh, we could go into a lot of level of detail in this, but each of these triangles shown here, and there's some even off the page, there's just four within this area that are sight lines that were put in, or, or benchmarks that were put in at the time that the Oliver Lock and Dam was reconstructed in the early 90s. They were, if you go out there, you'll see these casings that protect these benchmarks that have a known vertical datum that they go out periodically to ensure from a safety standpoint that the lock <coughs> and dam is not settling or moving. So this was one of the restrictions given to the city to say, okay, we have to do this control survey at times and you cannot build anything within these lines. So those are just linear restrictions. They're not within an area. But you may see in the bottom left, there's one, two, three, roughly six uh, particular alignments that nothing can can be obstructed within those. So that kind of sets up, you know, like a Mission Impossible array of, yeah. of lasers you gotta stay out of. This is probably the most restrictive as as much as that shows kind of the, the lasers and individual alignments, this area within the red hatch, and it's kind of hard to see underneath, but this is coming in from the west, curving into the park area. Uh, you can see in the upper right-hand corner is the existing restroom building, but anything within that red hatched area is, is in, within the FEMA-designated flood way, which would not allow any fill of any kind to be placed Obviously, there have been some things traditionally over time that were placed in there prior to enforcement of the regulations, but this area is roughly uh, eight feet below an acceptable elevation. So, number one, we're not allowed to actually fill within the red hatched area, but if we were in within an area surrounding it, any structures would have to be roughly eight feet above even where the existing bathroom facility is now. So, oh, wow. from an elevation standpoint, there's a concern, but really, this is even a barrier to anything being built uh, to the extent, well, 
it gets into this issue that in this again there's a summary to the right and we could read some of the finer points but this was basically a markup that was ultimately provided with some green goes and red no goes from the Corps of Engineers for use of the facility and the main one is this upper left box with the red X on it uh, and you know so the green boxes include the approved scope items that we proposed for the area the red were disallowed and one for example uh, refers to significant disturbance of anything on the site would not be allowed and then when we ask we asked to to widen the existing restroom building by eight inches the width of a block just to do something architecturally around the outside so this wide around the existing footprint of the the restroom that's there and we were denied because they considered that significant disturbance oh wow so that's just an example there are other details relative to environmental disturbance and things they would consider outside of, uh, you know, allowing any kind of improvements. They did allow us to replace the, uh, the playground structure we're replacing and enhancing all of the existing, you kind of see that, uh, you know, the picnic pavilions or that are kind of built in. There's mm -hmm. six of those right there on the north side mm -hmm. of the existing drive. We're completely remodeling those. The bathroom building itself is a complete rehabilitation but again, to a point, from an ex we could not extend the roof to get a mechanical unit inside of there to increase the mechanical capacity. So for so, HVAC. So Jason, so basically, the um, Corps of Engineers would not let us build a new bathroom. Right, o on this site, and again, this is their. This is actually a markup from the Corps of Engineers that they took the PDF and they make these comments. Because I think people need to know that, yeah. that it is not that, it's not, it wasn't the intention not to have a bathroom or a brand new bathroom. I think we, people need to know the truth. Yeah. It, the original concept was probably take the same plans from the Northern Riverwalk, uh -huh. reuse those, adapt them a little bit, demo this, put it down. But as soon as we got into the process, started coming across these verbally, mm -hmm. we knew there were issues. We further identified the floodplain, the floodway, and then next thing you know, we're painted inside the very box of that existing structure. Oh, wow. We're replacing all the, fi the fixtures, paint, painting the outside. We're replacing the roof exactly at the pitch it's at now, but that's how restrained we were to, to do remodeling. Now, Jason, we just can't ignore the Corps of Engineers. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, we just can't just do it anyway. Are, well, you, are you telling me we cannot supersede the United States Army Corps? <laughs> yeah, I, I guess you can infer <laughs> that. But not, not without war. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, go home. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that, and some of these restrictions would be even if you weren't leasing the very property from them. Mm -hmm. But because of that, that, there's, I mean, again, you wouldn't go. I'm being I know you are, but I'm saying you would maybe take your chances, or some people would in certain scenarios. But there's no way when you're leasing the property back with the agreement that you have in place with them that you're getting around that. So in a lease agreement, Chad, I'll ask you this: uh, in our lease agreement with the Corps, the things that we are agreeing to in our lease agreement itself are actually prescriptive by law that we have to. We don't have a choice but to follow that since this is the United States Army Corps of Engineers. Yes, sir, that's correct. I mean, the lease, the, the, the lease agreement with respect to uh, rules and regulations does say that we will follow federal rules and regulations as well as state and local laws with respect to it. But there would not be a circumstance where the Corps would have leased the property to the city with the understanding that we would not have to abide by those regulations. So it's, I mean, it's a condition of our use of the property. And the, the great news about this is that, you know, the, the abandoned country club property, um, once it is developed, will set up other opportunities in the future, that there will be other access points, other potential for uh, additional amenities to be added to this project. Um, and we look forward to seeing that because there will be things certainly that we could possibly do in tandem. You know, because as, as you, um, there was just discussion there could be a little bridge from across the little um, the little lake, the little pond from one area to residential. Um, along those lines, will the construction of the Western Riverwalk prohibit it, prohibit any uh, flow of traffic in the area? And I don't think so. No, right. I mean, we're we're replacing so. a gate, you know, shown mm -hmm. with a decorative type gate. 
just for the hours of operation. <clears throat> but so no, they're the, the exact, again, fortunately or unfortunately, the parking lot as it circulates today, exactly yeah. as it sits today, we'll resurface it. There'll be new landscaping. It'll look new. And we're going to get some more trees, right? Right. There's some more <laughs> trees. But, but outside of that, it will be back in place exactly as it is in function from a traffic flow just like it does today. More questions for Mr. Walker. I don't know. This would be for actually. This would probably be for our engineer. Um, was there any surprise? There was only one bid submitted on this. Well, so I guess I would a, answer that to some degree. I mean, take a whack at it. Yeah, I mean the market's funny still. We're shocked to only have one bid and to be within budget. That's the biggest shock. Um, without that competition, we were at their mercy and. I would say they showed mercy. I mean, there's no so way around it. So one bidder, had it not been within the budget, it would have to come back and be asked to reject. Well, yeah, that would have been a city decision. And But with federal guidelines, cer certain bid law requirements that you would maybe be afforded, you wouldn't have that flexibility. So, so between the 8.8 .8, um, that we're paying plot for this phase and the 11, roughly 11 and a quarter that the mayor briefed as to oh, what are those additional increments of things that happen between that 8.8 .8 and that 11 and a quarter. I think if, you, if you're okay, um, I know it kind of gets into the realm of finance, but um, I asked Carly and Katie Beth to have a spreadsheet and they can they can provide you a copy of one. Oh, I would love I was, a yeah, Me too. <laughs> so, hey, um, hey, Walt, to that point, and Carly maybe about to start that, r remind me because I do forget things, okay? I, I want to know Going back to that $15 million grant, mm -hmm. we had the Pet Bridge, we had the Western River Walk, we had the moorings. There was a bunch of things that were, were part of that. Go over the money for, for I mean, where all that is coming in now, because we've got mm -hmm. basically all those bids. We know what all the costs are now, right? Well, we know two of the three. The, yeah. the, the build grant required us to do three things, the Pet Bridge, mm -hmm. the Western River Walk, and then the bridge mooring. Mm -hmm. So the the Western, the Pet Bridge came in over budget, mm -hmm. as we know and discussed uh, back last year. And the determination of the council at that time was go ahead, we will just go ahead and make no budget amendments. We will pay for it out of the grant proceeds and elevate. Then once the Riverwalk bid comes in, at that point, we will address the budgetary changes we need to make at that time. <coughs> so the city's philosophy was to go ahead and expend our federal funds as much as we could at the very beginning of it. And, and an opportunity for us um, to cash flow it properly that way. And then we would then reconcile once we got this bid in. Uh, as Jason mentioned, we were very, you know, we felt very good that this bid actually came in within that construction budget. Overall, the project right now is over budget. That's right. Mm -hmm. But there's a win in that. So mm -hmm. the details of it, I'll turn it over to Ms. Standridge because she understands it much better than I do. Carter, before we go into the details, just in big chunks, what's the difference in that 8.8 .8 and that 11? Sure, yes, sir. Um, and, so so the, and, and by the way, yeah. I, I think at the very beginning of the meeting, you asked, but I'm okay with the timeline you outlined that we use this session and anything needed next session, but barring any surprises that we, we anticipate voting next session. I'm, I'm okay I'm fine with that. that. So the, so the larger buckets that add on to um, the 8.8 um, 8 million will be the engineering contract. We have about 800,000 in that. Property acquisition is about a million, it's 975,000 in that. We have the security equipment that we will purchase outside of the construction contract. That's about 245,000. And then some utility work, we have about 150,000 of that. So the, all of those combined with the construction, we'll get you to the 11.6. And the, in, the engineering is that, where is Jason, is that um, like on-site oversi oversight engineering? It's not the engineering that was There's two preliminary to this. That, that, well, that will be in two phases. So that will be the preliminary design work and then also the construction management piece of that. Yeah, that's, that's there. All right, thank you. That, yes. that answers my question. And here's the, the spreadsheet. Give me something to read tonight. Yes. <laughs> I don't think I'll have trouble. <laughs> and it, 
if this committee approves it in finance, we would ask that it go on the March 7th council agenda, but no later. The 21st is our last available date since we don't have a meeting on the 14th. Okay, so we've got, we have to award or not award by the 23rd, right? The 23rd is the day, but our last meeting is the 21st. So we've got to approve by then. Yes, sir. We can, um, I'm, I'm fine with us putting it on finance next, next week, week next presuming week. that uh, we go the, the projects committee before that will resolve any issues or questions related to the project itself. To, um, so y'all agree with the outline I put in the beginning, correct? I do. So Raven, uh, John, and I don't know where Cassius is, he's coming back, but what questions do y'all have or what questions would you like to have answered before next I'm week? Is there anything y'all, and Kip, what do y'all what do y'all think? I can't you vote on vote this, that's right. right. <laughs> but I'd like to say this is amazing project. Right. This is just amazing. I'm jealous. I wish we had a river in District 6. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got some puns yeah, out there, We don't can you? run it across the Chris Mill Creek. There you, well, well that's, that's not even mine. Uh, <laughs> well, part of it is. You're right. right. You're right. I, would like, I would like to make a statement, please, sir. That's a, that's a first. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you know, I'm, I don't, I'm not used to doing this, but um, I want to thank this mayor. Let me tell you, I've been working with him for 22 years. And I have seen 22 years of total commitment to the west side of Tuscaloosa. And this happened, this is you. And we've all had support. You've had support, there's no doubt about that. And I've been happy to support everything along the way, but you made this commitment when you were first elected. Thank you, Mayor. And it always shines through every single year, every single budget. And, and I just thank you for your persistence and you're never giving up on your dreams of making this West End the way we just saw it. Thank you, I appreciate it. That means a lot, thank you. I can't follow up that, but, um, but Mayor, I, I do feel those same sentiments, but I just wanna say, you know, growing up in West Tuscaloosa and to see it transform like this, this is awesome. And I'm happy to be a part of the council that made you know, that's, that made this progress happen. Um, also, it's so many older people in my district that call me and they say, you know, this is not going on and that's not going on. I have took so many residents on personal rides just now in MLK and Jack Warner. Like, don't say that again. Now let's get on the same page. Like, look at this, you know, like we're just riding through my city and I'm proud of that. I mean, like that's a that's a nice conversation to sit in the car with someone and have that has lived in West Tuscaloosa longer than myself and to see the reaction on their face and to see how, like, wow, you know? So I do want a copy of this video, and I want to, um, <laughs> in the presentation, because the next time I'm going to be able to, like, pull out my tablet and say, look, this is what it's, the overall picture is going to look like. And that means so much to people. Like, my parents are constantly asking me, so what else are they going to do? And I'm like, can I just get y'all a book or something? Because we, we love talking about it, and it's so much excitement in West Tuscaloosa. And to see this presentation, I just feel I'm happy about this. This is what uh, our our mayor has presented to us, and the council has been able to support. You know, most of us, and I'm very excited. Well, this is a you. this is a lot of progress from from someone, and I am getting choked up. This is a lot of progress from someone that's coming from West Tuscaloosa, and to see how much improvement and investments um, will continue to be made because of a project like this. It's a great words, Councilwoman Howard. I, I wanted to say too, you you, you didn't like my well, words. We really <laughs> pray. He did like that. Uh, okay, um, I was just going to say, you know, we, we've had a, um, we've had two years that we've had a council together, and we've worked, I, I think, very well with the administration on a lot of different things. But I, I just want to thank Walt. I want to thank the, the staff and and the great companies that we've worked with to make this day possible. Because I think we all want to see the revitalization and the continued momentum in, in West Tuscaloosa, but I like the idea of all the connectivity that's coming all the way down the river to yeah. to my district that I'm proud to represent District 3, all the things that are happening. I think this is gonna be something that all of our citizens are really, really gonna enjoy, and, and you're seeing the Elevate projects kind of happening now. I mean, I guess mm -hmm. this conversation's been going on 
for years, but I, I think a lot of this credit goes to the staff and the mayor and of course the council because we always all have not agreed on everything, but we've worked through what issues we've had, I think, to come come and do the right thing. <coughs> this, this group of people that I serve with, we will do the right thing. And, and we all have a great vision, I think, of the future of Tuscaloosa, and I think it's bright in all parts of town. So I'm excited about that today. So. Well, and the last thing I'll add, and thank you all again for your kind words, I'm a reflection yeah. of, of your support and an amazing team. And um, the things that you see behind the river walk that you've seen in some renderings, I do think this, this along with MLK Jack Warner Parkway can make all that possible in the future. Mm -hmm. That we don't know what that will look like. Ultimately, that'll be up to the owners of the property to develop. But this will set the tone and tenor for something that's going to be amazing for generations long after our service here is done. And I do agree with you, Mr. Crow. There is a lot. This, you know, West Tuscaloosa is the focus today. But whether it's in East Tuscaloosa or North Tuscaloosa or South Tuscaloosa, there's going to be more more to come. And I'm really you know, proud to be part of this team and be a part of it. So it's an exciting day. And, and in the meantime, if you get any questions, let me know. Um, I know there's some who always want to let perfect get in the way of great. There's nothing that's ever perfect. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you that this, this is an unbelievable job by a very dedicated team that's going to just be the beginning of something very special and West Tuscaloosa has earned it and deserve it. And Walt, in the words of, of Coach Saban, was it this is not the end, this is just the beginning. Yeah. And as we move forward with the Saban Center and the other things that we are looking at as a city, I think it's going to be an exciting time for our, for our citizens over the next several years. And I'm looking forward to it. So with that, any other questions I'll make a motion. from committee, committee members? <laughs> and. And Mr. Tyner. <laughs> um, do we have any other I'll second his comments or <laughs> quick, questions? Quick comment. Yes, sir. Katie Bell <laughs> from Poopa in the spreadsheet. It's incredibly simple, it's easy to follow, and addresses yeah. the right things. Thank you. And it's on one page. That's right. Katie Bell's good now. Okay. And Mr. Chair, before, uh, you, yes. before you close, <laughs> yeah. uh, let me echo all of the sentiments that have been spoken today. Uh, but I also want to thank Tyler. Uh, Tyler has worked on this project um, with me and with other persons going back and forth, trying to get dates and timelines. Um, I want to congratulate you on the work as well as everyone else. And uh, thank you so much for the work that you've done on this project. Thank you. Happy to do it. Yes, sir. All right. <clears throat> I mean, I guess I've already got a motion from Mr. Tyner, but I guess Someone. I like this legal. <laughs> Someone got a motion from Mr. Uh, Wilson. I'm just excited. <laughs> I know. You got a second? To uh, is adjourn. the motion to adjourn? Yes, the motion is to adjourn. Yes. What's left? Motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs>